The intersection of technology and healthcare is where the most exciting startups are built. Good morning, guests, delegates, and everyone present over here. I, Revati Nanda. And I, Anjali. Students of MBA in Hospital and Healthcare Management, Symbiosis Institute of Health Sciences, Symbiosis International University, are your hosts for this session. Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin the session on startups in healthcare, focusing on the opportunities for innovations and how startups are fueling the change in healthcare. India's healthcare industry has been growing at a compound annual growth rate of around 22% since 2016. The healthcare system has come a long way from the traditional medical system to technology adoption and innovation. The startup companies are now focusing on strengthening India's healthcare system to overcome challenges like affordability, patient monitoring, personalized healthcare, accessibility, supply chain, and quality care. With this being said, I would now request Mr. Mudit Danwate, co-founder and chief executive officer of Dozi onto the stage. With a mechanical engineering degree from Indian Institute of Technology, Indoor, Sir has served a vehicle dynamic expert at all time. Mr. Mudit had multiple accolades to his credit. To name a few, Bridge Mohalal Munjal Award 2022 and Economic Times Innovation Award 2020. He was listed in Forbes India 30 under 30 2021. As India's brightest young entrepreneur, he designed his own thought control bionic arm on June 26, 2017. Sir, we request you to share your valuable insights on startups in healthcare. So thanks a lot for inviting me here. Dr. Sangram Zadav, uh, you know, actually phoned me in that, you know, we want you for addressing this audience. I said that I'll be more than glad to actually come over. But what a beautiful campus you all have, right? I am coming here for the very first time. I was, uh, you know, just awed by, you know, just the approach road itself. So amazing. I'm pretty sure studying here will be one of the best things uh, right over there. And also, you know, spending evenings and so on. So, yeah. So quickly, uh, I think there was a very lofty introduction over there. I'm not uh, that, <laughs> uh, I would say, I'm, I'm not very different from you know, a lot of people who are sitting over here. I'll just briefly talk about my journey uh, right before even we get into what we are doing at Dozy and so on. So I come from you know, IIT Bombay Mechanical Engineering. Uh, just it was read out. My interest was always into race cars. In fact, the very reason I went to IIT Bombay was because I wanted to build my own race car. So I, in fact, did that. In my four years of engineering, we built four full-scale race cars, including India's first electric race car. And we used to go to Silverstone, UK, right, to race cars with other you know, international teams and so on. Right? So that's exactly where I learned my engineering, along with, of course, you know, getting the degree from IIT. I think what I learned was that. In that time, I actually had one more thing that I did. I redesigned a cricket bat also, I'm sure, you know, all of here, IPL season, a lot of us are also, you know, cricket fans. So we redesigned a cricket bat in a way that, you know, when the ball hits the edge, instead of traveling directly, you know, we'll introduce a downward component of velocity. So the catch, wicket keeper, you know, stand, has to stand a little bit, you know, two to three meters more ahead, thereby reducing the chances of getting out by nearly about 19%. And uh, later we sold that, the license of that uh, patent to Sligenzer, the British sporting goods company when I was in my third year. So it was good fun. It was also the time when I learned negotiations and a lot of that, which of course are, uh, you know, fearing me pretty well now. Uh, and that bat was used later by all the giants like Sachin, Adam Gilchrist, Ricky Ponting, Wasim Zafar and so on, right? So it was lots of fun doing that. Moving on, on graduation, I again, you know, rekindled my you know, enthusiasm for race cars and I joined a company called Altair Engineering and we used to give consultancy services for mechanical simulations and AI-driven softwares for Formula One teams. I actually used to work quite a lot with McLaren, Mercedes and so on, which are uh, 
now, you know, this season they are not doing that great, but generally very good teams out there in Silverstone. And I learned there how we monitor, you know, health of the car using telemetry, using sensors and so on. We used to do that, right? Every smallest of aspect of car health, be it tire pressure monitoring to everything, we used to monitor continuously, remotely and so on. While this was amazing, in fact, it was my dream come true, right? I was fascinated with race cars, I was working with them. One day it changed my life because I got a phone call from my home that we nearly lost a family member. So my mama, who went through a kidney transplant, after successful transplant, after waiting for nearly six to seven years, right, for the kidney, developed infection later and had developed sepsis, which was caught very late. And because of that, some very irreversible damage was done to his body, right? And of course, even now as well, uh, he has not recovered fully. And that really disturbed me. And, you know, here I am trying to monitor, I am making cars faster by monitoring every car health and whatnot, and here we are losing humans uh, because of poor monitoring in, uh, and so on. And in fact, when I later studied this, right, I understood that this is not something which is just restricted to one off case over here. It is pretty common. In fact, the entire standard of care, especially outside ICU, is nurses checking vitals every four to six hours. This is still a guideline, right? Even if this was also done, what actually happens in practice theory at night, you obviously don't want to wake up a patient to take vitals and so on. There is huge workload on nurses, so therefore, you know, that vital checking may not happen. Because of human way of doing it, errors might come in. And because of all of this, in practice, there are, you know, adverse events that do happen inside hospital quite often, uh, right? Even outside ICUs as well. And why we are just talking about hospitals per se, right? Then I started even thinking further. What is happening to these patients when they are going home, right? Especially after a transplant, after a critical surgery, you are not going to recover just in four or five days, right? You are going to live with that for entire your life. Who is monitoring and ensuring that you are doing good on a day-to-day -day basis, right? And therefore, I thought that, you know, it's just like we are monitoring car health with every smallest of aspect, why can't we develop something for human health as well, right? And that's where I decided I'll come back. Um, I convinced my co-founder as well, Gaurav, that you know, this is something that we should be working on. And about seven years back, we set up this company that is now called Dozy. And the idea and the purpose was that we improve the standard of care so much using technology that we can avoid any kind of uh, you know, adverse event uh, outside ICUs, right? especially when they are happening and so on at least reduce them, right? Using the power of technology, power of data, and so on. If we could give right information at the right time using our AI-driven models and so on, I think a lot can be, you know, a lot of difference can be made. That was a core hypothesis with which we started this. And it was, you know, a, a long journey. As I mentioned, it has been almost seven and a half years now uh, since we started this. We started in 2015. The first thing was that, you know, what as are we making, right? I hope I have already answered the why part of it. Even, you know, sir, before me mentioned, always question why first. Baki sab ho jata hai, right? But why was very critical. Why was because, you know, I had something that I realized. I wanted no one else experience the same kind of pain. Second thing is when I saw that this is a bigger problem and I knew that maybe I have a skill set to do this, I can create an impact. Uh, and that is the core thing which, you know, really resonated with me. So I started this, right? So that is the core reason why we started Dozy. Now, what we did in that way? We started studying that why can't every bed, every patient bed has a monitor? There were different problems that we saw, right? Of course, cost is one thing. Not the biggest of thing, but of course, that is one thing that, you know, you can't increase the cost like ICU bed to every bed. Second is that you don't want patient to feel like patient also, right? And that is also very true. Especially outside ICU, we want to give, we want to give a patient an experience that if we put wires, electrodes, cuff to a patient, patient keeps on feeling like patient, right? 
you know, the reason why we actually get better is much more than even medical, right? Mental and all of these spiritual things also play a very important role. Bahar, khidki ke bahar, wo kaua kya kar raha hai? increases vitality in you as well, right? So therefore, it is very critical that even in a hospital, right, patients are not felt being felt like patients all the time, and that actually improves them many folds. We saw this in our, you know, research as well. The other part which was also very critical was that person who is actually administering and running all of this is nurses at the end of it. And they are quite loaded, right? Sir, in fact, very just now showed that, you know, we already have lack of nursing in India. And India, Philippines, these are countries who are generally exporters, right, of nursing manpower and so on. If we have lack, then the entire world has, you know, lack of nursing. That is what is the reality right now, right? There is a global shortage of nursing everywhere. Just in US, in last two years or so after COVID, the cost of nursing has almost, you know, become twice, thrice it has become. Reason of, because of the lack and the shortage of nursing. So if something which is already in shortage, if we put more things for them to do that, you know, you have to now look at a monitor more. You have to put electrodes on each person for the sake of monitoring them and so on. They're not going to do it. Right? Because they don't even have time for that. So what we wanted was an entirely new paradigm altogether, and that's exactly what Josie. So we thought that you know that bed which is there, patient is going to be on that bed, obviously in the hospital, and even when they are at home also, they are recovering in the bed, right? Even when we are good, we are spending good amount of time in the bed, right? As in almost one third our time is in the bed. So why can't that piece of furniture which is there, just by the virtue of patient being there, we are monitoring when the patient is just on that, without using any wires, cuffs, or electrodes. Just the patient is lying down on that, without even touching, and I'll show you how all we are doing that. But just by collecting vibration placed under the mattress, from every heartbeat, every respiration, and all of that, we are able to take clinical grade, ICU grade, Monitoring of data is happening, and then we are using all of this data to drive clinical decisions, uh, right? So we transmit this information to nurses, doctor, and timely in in information if it is given, I think the staff is very motivated to then, you know, even save lives, and they do save lives. In fact, this last one year alone, so currently we are present in over 370 hospitals across India, including few of the biggest hospital brands, uh, like Apollo, Breach Candy, uh, uh, just look uh, now over there, even uh, Ramaya, Bellevue, Railways, IGGMC, right? So these are multiple hospitals where we are now present, even not just in India, now even outside India as well, in Tanzania, in uh, UAE. Now we have started our service as well. So we are present in over 370 hospitals. We are monitoring more than 8,000 beds now continuously. And it is also FDA cleared as well. So it is, yes, proudly made in India but nothing short of any global accreditation which is out there. So we have every sorts of ISO, be it data security, privacy, uh, QMS, uh, then FDA 510K clearances, right? So we are global standards in all of that. And again, the best part in this is that, you know, we are doing all of this over here in India. And it's possible. In fact, just yesterday, I think, you know, some of you might have read the news as well. There is national uh, medical device policy which has been passed, that has been passed for, for the focus of that India today. And again, this was something which was also a factor why I wanted to start on in this field, which apparently is believed to be very, very hard. And trust me, it is. Right? That is one of the reasons why I'm going to speak today is not just all the goods of it, but you know what it also takes. In fact, this exactly was my brief that uh, you know, Dr. Zada had given me. You know, don't just talk about all the goods and what is happening and all of that, right? Also talk about what are the challenges. So we are going to come to that. But while it is there, one truth is also there that, you know, India imports right now almost 80% of its medical devices from outside. There is one more truth. Do you know the medical devices which are coming to India, they are almost end-of-life medical devices, right? G, Philip, as in I should not take any names, so maybe off the record over there, but... The companies which are you know, supplying all of this, right? they are already, uh, they have already released quite advanced equipments outside, right? But in India, ones that are released are almost five, six, seven years later. 
The reason for that is because of the cost sensitivity of the market and because you know, no one wants to sacrifice the profit margins and so on. So therefore, we are you know, almost getting very redundant kind of technologies all the time, right? For the sake of cost, right? So that is another reason why you know, we questioned while we are doing UPI, right, we are solving the next level fintech revolution is coming from India. We are doing all sorts of things. In fact, this very institution is doing such amazing things over here. Why can't we do it for medical devices? As in, why can't? And that was a reason why we started Dozy. That, and again, this bill and policy which has been now released, the government also is you know, starting to push in that direction. That right now, we have 80% dependency on imports. We want to get into net export. And that is something you know, which is very much possible. In fact, Dozy is one part of it, but you know, at the end of it, at the end of this lecture, maybe if you know, I can resonate in some of you, uh, even by some percentage that you know, and some of you actually start in this field as well, I'll be very glad because finally that is the dream, right? That India should be self-dependent on in this very important field of medical devices as well. Coming along, so that is the time when we started. That is how we started. That is the reason why we started and what we wanted to solve. But what exactly we did, let's probably talk about that now. I talked about what is the reason why you know, all of this is required. And that's why automation and digitization, we thought. And even Sir also did mention that, you know, see, at the end of it, if the shortage is there, you're not just going to solve by throwing people at the problem. Right? That is never going to work. Technology is always a force, force multiplier. That is how we have always learned it. Uh, right? that when we want to do things at scale, right? as India is growing, now India is officially uh, right, the most populous nation in the world. That also means we will have most of all diseases also of the world over here. Most uh, you know, older people also, a lot of them will be here and so on. We have to take care of them. How will we take care of them? We need doctors, we need nurses. Right? But is just the linear scaling up model going to be sufficing it? Answer is no. India has to come up with its own model. India can't just copy paste any Europe, US, uh, and Scandinavian, Scandinavian models over here. We need to make our own models. And I think the model of India, the way it has all done, especially in the last one decade, is technology driven and force multiplier of human resources, right? That is the model that India has always done. So what you know, a technology piece that at Dozy we have done. And again, this is, you know, I'll be talking Dozy. You can, you know, perceive it as any kind of, you know, technological intervention per se. But with Dozy itself, what we have seen that, you know, when we bring in Dozy, what it does that by automating this entire process of vitals tracking, right? In fact, we did a time motion studies uh, with many of the hospitals, what nurses ac actually do. In that, they're spending, uh, they have lots of work, right? Including taking vitals, charting, all of that is one part of it. But they are also giving medication, they are also changing the beddings, they are also dressing, they are giving care, they are, you know, uh, escalating things to the physicians and so on. They are spending, while a lot of the human element a technology can never replace, right? That is also a reality, right? In all these ages of AI and all of that. Is really an AI-enabled nurse possible? I don't think so. Right? Finally, a human requires a human to you know, come back to the full vitality, full force of it. So human element, I don't think, can be replaced. But things like vitals tracking, charting, digitization, communicating them, if we can just automate these small things, we saw that you know, we can save nearly about 30% of the entire nurse's day right? just by doing that. So nurses can become more efficient. They can spend more time now with the patients. It also becomes more accurate as well, right? And it is very, again, very understandable. Reason being that, you know, if someone is doing that manually, a machine doing that, machine is obviously built for, you know, taking those things much more accurately. So it is there. And at the end of it, what is also there, it improves the patient experience as well. One way in which the medical industry now is changing and where a lot of even private hospitals and even public as well. One element which is now coming in is patient experience and that is very, very critical. 
now you know person chooses a hospital not on the basis of whether i'll be you know how is the doctor how is the brand and all of that that is one of course but there is also an element of at the end of it how is my room what is my experience how behaved is the staff and so on because experience also matters now right and in that do you really think a patient who has just slept someone comes and wakes him up to take his vitals that compromises his experience so something to automate that entire process without even touching him if it takes vitals it matters and most importantly what is most critical for any hospital is patient safety at the end of it what is the uh, as in outside icu what is the mortality ratios and so on right those are the most 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 critical things and by making things now every 4 to 6 hours but every minute one thing that fundamentally changes is actually the patient safety so that's how it actually drives a change in fact what we have seen as i was talking about it it nearly saves 80% of the lesser nursing time it takes for taking vitals it saves 144 lives every year this is documented independent research which has you know published this by implementing these bits it reduces the average length of stay inside icu by almost 1.3 days which is 26% of the time that patient sp spends time in icu so it re reduces patient's bill also and at the end of it also saves cost for the hospitals as well almost 2 and a half 2.7 crores worth of sa savings over there so what is dozy right coming to that so what we actually developed was this thin sheet of sensor that goes under the mattress this is a very interesting story about this under the mattress part as well probably i'll touch that uh quickly but there is a, this thin sheet that goes under the mattress patient sleeps over it Ev in every heartbeat every respiration cycles and so on our body creates a vibration and every body part has a distinct vibration that is exactly the core science behind how we work this sensor sheet is that sensitive that placed under the mattress it is even capturing when individual heart valves are also opening and closing mitral valve aortic valve and so on as well what are the diaphragm movements how are they happening we even capture those parts as well so all of this is consumed it goes to the data pod which goes on the patient bedside and then it is transmitted to the central command station where hundreds of patients can be monitored on a single screen and if there is any kind of abnormal alert you get an alert over there so that the central team can get you know alerted about that and at the same time nurses are also getting all this information on their handheld devices as well so that even you know when they are sitting in the canteen also if a patient goes in risk they immediately get an alert so that no patient is there you know who is going unattended that way and patients families appreciate that right that immediately happened someone came to me and that is something you know what is making the future of healthcare now so dozy monitors all of this vitals heart rate respiration in fact one of the most distinctive feature that we have and i am going to talk about that is blood pressure non contact blood pressure in fact we are world's only company right now to do that with clinical grade efficacy and so on sleep apnea heart rate variability and even then it is extensible to even other attachments as well like spo2 temperature ecg glucose and so on as well all of this while we have done one thing you know which is very crucial in medical devices is the accuracy part of it in fact it took us about four and a half years we worked with nimhans aims jaydeva to establish that although it is under the mattress it is still clinical grade in nature and icu so we compared against icu grade equipments for almost 10000 patients we published our research and that is something what it takes to actually you know before bringing a product in the market because you are dealing with lives of the people here right you just can't bring a technology because you are excited about it uh, and even hospitals are not going to accept it also even though if you get it without having the proof of the pudding over there and that's exactly where you know we spent quite a lot of our time efforts money also it took us four and a half years as i mentioned to you know establish dozy as a standard of care that way so before you know i go into that i quickly want to play a small video of how exactly dozy works so this thin sensor sheet which is kept under the mattress it is capturing vibrations from every heartbeat every respiration cycles and so on the sensor sheet digitizes the entire vibration data and converts it into and sends it to this data pod over there 
This pod further encrypts all of the data and sends it to the secure cloud platform that again Dozy has developed. The cloud hosts all our algorithms, all the machine learning and deep learning algorithms, which segregates this vibration data into different kind of biomarkers, so heart rate, respiration, blood pressure. It also does a trend-based analysis as well. So if there is a patient whose trends are going into abnormal zone, it identifies that, escalates it to the central nursing station so that they can, you know, further escalate it to the field team using their handheld devices and the nurses reaches there on time and saves the day over there, right? So this is the paradigm which is happening now all day, all across and close to about 380 hospitals across India and this is all in India, right? So this is the way in which now healthcare is changing. While we are at that, thanks a lot for acknowledging that. While we are at that, I want to touch upon one more thing, right? Blood pressure. Out of all our parameters, as in one thing which we are really proud of is actually blood pressure because this is where we have truly changed the paradigm of healthcare itself in a way, right? Blood pressure was, of course, I don't want to start from there, but it was discovered in 1733 where on a dying horse, one French scientist realized that, you know, with, when the horse is dying, there was a, a kind of pipe which was put in the juggler vein, right? And as the horse was dying, there was a dip in the you know, standing pressure over there. So, so, so people realize that, you know, there is something like blood pressure which is related to the vitality of an organism. So everyone started researching on how to calculate blood pressure. Of course, one of the methods which was found was arterial blood pressure, which even to date is the most accurate method of calculating blood pressure. In this, you put a pipe inside, you know, your vein, artery, sorry, artery. And obviously using the Bernoulli's principles and all of that, right, you calculate what is the blood pressure in the bloodstream right now. But, you know, see the date over there, 1828, probably even, you know, invention of a lot of, you know, infection control things which are there, even including, uh, you know, anesthesia and so on also. So people were actually, you know, piercing this for calculating blood pressure. People were even dying because of this, right? So there was a constant movement to find blood pressure without having to do all of this procedure. That's where a German scientist in 1881 came up with this cuff-based device. And again, the principle behind that was if we can put enough pressure, you know, in the cuff that can stop the blood flow in the artery, that will be roughly equal to the blood pressure of artery when that happens because fluid works that way, uh, right? And when it is happening, that time the, throm the throbbing of the heart can be felt and a lot of that. And on the basis of that, blood pressure, the NIBP that we know was created. Today it has moved ahead, maybe it has become digital, but it has still remained the same. While that method is great, even today as well, I would say for spot checks and a lot of that, when it comes to continuous monitoring, this is not a method which is believed much because, you know, it is very much prone to, if the patient moves the hand, you know, after the nurse has applied it and goes away, patient moves the hand, it gets loose, it leads to a lot of errors, right? And that's exactly we thought probably we can solve that. Dozy, which you know, I saw, showed you how it exactly works. So it is calculating even in every heartbeat, what is the pressure on the heart walls also, right? So it has that kind of precision when it, cal it is calculating all of those parameters. And using that, now using different kind of modeling methods, using AI, deep learning, we are able to back calculate with good amount of precision, even blood pressure as well, right? So that's the discovery of non-contact blood pressure. In fact, that is even the trademarks we own, even the patents we own, everything in the world, we are the first one to do that. So this is already... I don't have probably a slide on that, right? But one thing, and we are already seeing the difference of that, because now, you know, what is happening? Every ward bed. And in India, let me talk about that as well. In India, we have about 20 lakh beds, hospital beds. Out of them, about 100,000 beds are ICU beds, which are monitored. But all other beds, that is the standard of care is nurse going and checking, right? And that happens every four to six hours, as I had mentioned. Now, wherever, whichever are dozy beds, every minute, even blood pressure is being monitored, right? 
even blood pressure, and again, without having the inconvenience to the patient of having all of that. Placed under the mattress, we are doing all of that. Now in this, we are every day getting at least one to two success stories from the hospitals who are calling us and telling us that, you know, what happened was there, we got an alert from Dozy, we went and checked, blood pressure was low, we gave a NORAD, it came back to normal, and so on, right? So forgive me if I have mixed it up, right? I know some very, uh, you know, experienced people are sitting in front of me, so they gave a medication and fixed it, right? Let's not call the name of uh, the medication over there. So, yeah, so this is happening now. And imagine now this happening in ward bed is something which is path-breaking for healthcare. And again, you know, this is something that we are trying to do. One more thing, now on this topic, right? Since I'm mentioning that, so the gold, so we actually did, the, again, in medical devices, proof of the pudding lies in data, clinical studies, right? So we did almost a 200 patient trial, uh, right? Uh, working with Apollo hospitals, working with BGS, working with Jayadeva hospital and so on. We got data from arterial blood pressure. There was a dozy which was placed under the mattress of the patient and we also put NIVP as well. So we are collecting blood pressure from three streams altogether. In fact, this was one of the biggest studies done over here in this way. So golden graph that you see is actually arterial blood pressure, which is the golden standard of blood pressure monitoring. The green graph that you see is NIBP, non-invasive blood pressure, especially when we are using it on a continuous basis. So it's especially, therefore, you see initially it is quite close, but as the time is progressing, it is you know becoming more. The error is increasing over there. And the third white graph that is there is NCBP. So on a long-term basis, actually, mean absolute error of dozy, dozy's non-contact blood pressure is even lesser than NIBP as well, and that is what we have created. So quickly, one more thing, right? Uh, again, why I'm giving you, I'm not trying to sell anyone over here dozy, right? Why I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do is I'm picking things feature by feature and trying to tell what it really takes, right, to actually, you know, transform things. There was one more thing, right? Now you can imagine, earlier there was not one problem. We created one problem. So earlier, because there was not monitoring in every bed, one of the other problems in monitors is that it gives a lot of alarms. It is distressing for patients. It is distressing even for the staff as well. In fact, what bhedia ayawali kahani becomes very true. If it starts giving too many alarm, the actual practice that happens is ki isko mute karo, or band karo and ignored. Then what is happening? Then it is as good as not monitoring, right? So therefore, you can imagine now, in ICU it is fine because it is a critical patient, so no one can do that. But especially in ward, right, when this starts to happen, starts giving alarm, we started seeing that you know people actually were you know complaining us about that that this has created more problem for us so take it back so actually we then had to rethink again that you know how do we now you know solve this problem so we cre we created a something called a smart alert alerts over there now this smart alert what it does using a lot of ai and you know i am sure all of you are reading a lot about chat gpt and things like that so it is using all of these you know things to actually see how to increase the specificity of an alarm. And using this, the alert system that we have made now is 10 times more specific than a general threshold-based alerting system, which is generally used everywhere. So you can imagine when Dozy is telling this patient's heart rate or anything is high, heart rate is always high. It is not the question about whether the heart rate was high or not, but whether it is actionable or not, right? It is that much more precision precise now. We are not, so specificity is near 100%, so we are not leaving any patient out, but even the specificity we have now, you know, taken up to that level. And this is something why we are seeing now more adoption. And now once which we have all of this as well, we are getting constant feedback from nurses that, you know, now this is solving our life. This has made our life so much more easier. And so, you know, I think Innovation, we say innovation is one instance, but what it takes to actually take things to market is a series of lots of things that happen and constant efforts which it takes to bring product to the market. So innovation is good, but not sufficient, right, to take things over there, right? While we had Dozy, a path-breaking technology with us seven years back, 
that's taken us even till now also where are we right 380 hospital on a scale of india is nothing right idea is that every bed every patient bed should be a dozy bed that's when we have succeeded right so that is what we are working towards now i did tell about you know dozy is fda 510k cleared as well again you know why this is important we are you know challenging a status quo over here right obviously everyone can very easily say right ki india se banta hua medical device will be jugad right that is a general you know uh, general uh, i would say feedback or general thought process which is there so therefore we have to ensure you know sometimes we have to do more is fda required to sell in india answer is no right but trust me after we have got fda our sales cycle has gone almost half right people like it ki ha matlab india ka hai lekin matlab it is global standards in nature right nothing less than that and obviously now we have started to expand outside india we have started you know exporting to uae now we are starting to export to even us as well so it does help over there and overall the dream right that we are not going to be just the importers of technology medical technology we are going to be exporter we are moving towards there it is also covered by insurance also by the way and it is also entirely integrated with the hospitals hi system so there was one more thing that we actually saw right to take adoption even further right i am ardent believer of the fact that you know if you want to make things mass the thing should be so simple and so seamless that literally nothing should be done by the nurses right by that i don't mean uh, you know nothing by that i don't mean nothing nothing it means care part should be there that the mundane thing why you have to enter name of the patient and a lot of that admission counter pe kar liya na usne so why we have to keep on redoing the same things right that is a general practice which does happen on every new technology that comes here what we have done here we have made the system so integrable that now when we go to those 380 hospitals right it is integrated to the hi system moment the admission counter per the patient is entered he has assigned a bed he comes to that no wires nothing attached just lies down on that monitoring starts nurses don't have to even you know lift up one thing to start monitoring they start getting reports doctors start getting reports in their rounds right and that is how you know healthcare starts changing right uh, that's what dozy is trying to do now what is the impact ab ye itna kiya to hua kya isse let's quickly come that so now we are in 370 hospitals one of the most proudest thing i could i can say that you know what i am uh, and where our success can be measured is that first line which is there right 8000 timely intervention and these are all documented in time if we can give information lives can be saved this was a hypothesis with which we started in healthcare that is the thing right time is muscle is with which healthcare's entire infra infrastructure is based on and when we give the timely in intervention and when nurses act on it in time it actually saves life right every time a patient reaches an icu early there are higher chances for us to save them every time a patient reaches uh, you know a nurse reaches in time it is very possible that you know we have uh, basically avoided something of a potential code blue and so on so that's what dozy is doing now in bellevue i did mention bellevue in fact was the first hospital in fact this is one of the oldest hospital in the eastern india oldest private hospital in eastern india here every bed is a dozy bed this was the first hospital to do so so they have about 150 beds every bed has continuous vital signs monitoring with dozy uh, right so every bed is a smart bed over there ms rama is another hospital in bangalore where we have done that and apollo hospitals uh, across bangalore across india also now we have that iggmc nagpur was an, another you know hospital in public setting itself where we uh, were able to do that and this was done in covid time one more you know very uh, heart warming experience was actually with indian army in fact we got a opportunity to work very closely with lieutenant general madhuri kanetka she gave us she gave me a phone call on wednesday may 2021 that i am setting up a covid center i don't have enough doctors and nurses uh, so 300 covid bed covid center was being set up she phoned me up on wednesday 
that on Friday I want it to be ready and up and running. We actually did that. So a special cargo plane was flew in from Bangalore to uh, uh, Delhi. I also traveled in that, so it was an amazing experience doing all of that. <laughs> but the accolade that we got that, you know, there is one company that works like Indian Army and that is Josie, right? That is something which is framed in our office and kept over there. And another thing which she actually sent in a letter later that, you know, the reason why we were able to give care to e each and every patient out there because there was Josie, because Josie never sleeps. In fact, we have made that a tagline. Thanks a lot for her. <laughs> so, yeah. So be it night, be it day, right? That is the power of technology, right? It can give seamless, continuous monitoring no matter what. Dr. Pradeep Tanda, so this is also very critical how life of, at the end of it, you know, I believe that nurses are, you know, one of those who do most thankless job, right? They are under tremendous pressure, but at the same time, you know, when we get good, we just, you know, thank the doctor, go away, right? But there is also a nurse, you know, who has done tremendous amount of effort she has taken to do that. When she says this, that, you know, Dozy has given me that, you know, she has made me enable of monitoring more patient. That means more care is being distributed now, right? It is something which is very, uh, you know, close to my heart as it comes. As I was mentioning, we are not restricted just to hospitals also. We are even coming to homes as well, so this is a product for that. And we are not just restricting to few vital parameters as well, right? In fact, we are doing some cutting edge research, so this is with AIMS. We are automating just placed under the mattress without even touching the persons. Can we calculate things like left ventricle ejection time, isovolumetric relaxation time, contraction times, and so on to calculate the ejection fraction? Now, this is something that we are working on. You don't need, and that is a hypothesis, we are far from that, but if we succeed, you won't need you know, doing 2D Doppler echo. Just lie down on it, will tell you, you know, what is the ejection fraction of the patient you know, on the bed itself. So I think that's it, uh, what I wanted to cover. Uh, but that is the idea now, right? From here, where are we taking this? As I mentioned, I am not thrilled just by the innovation part of it. Just because we are world's first, sir, very rightly mentioned, world first doesn't mean anything. Unless it has reached every patient, it doesn't mean anything altogether. So that's what we are trying to do, every bed should have, dozy bed is a figure of speech over there, but see even, every bed should have care is what we are you know, trying to do. Even if in the process we create a market and that competitor comes, I think we have succeeded in that. And we are creating an entirely new market altogether, right? You can imagine right now market, monitoring market is only believed 100,000 patient beds. We are saying no, it is every patient bed. That is what dozy is trying to do. Thanks a lot, you have been a wonderful, crowd and listener. I hope, uh, you know, I was able to give some insights in that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The forum is now open for a question and answer session. Yeah, okay. 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 Yes, please. Uh, can you get mic? Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for this informative session, sir. And uh, I'm, uh, I hope uh, we all are very impressed by your dozy bed. Uh, and uh, I just have a query, sir. Like we have seen the, uh, in pediatric uh, departments, mostly the mother also get admitted along with the Correct. child. At that time, how does your dozy bed work, sir? Is it working yeah. for the mother or for the child? Excellent question. No, that is correct. No, brilliant observation, right? Uh, so that is the reason why we have not yet launched for pediatric population. Not that we can't catch the vibration data. In fact, you know, we have even tested it for neonates and all of that as well, right? It does work. Algorithms do work in even much higher heart rates and all of that as well. But the reason why we have still not been able to launch for pediatric bed is exactly that. The way we are solving that, the way of solving that is, this is not going to happen in the bed then, right? Again, dozy bed is a figure of speech, as I mentioned. We are coming up with a next generation device. Uh, in fact, it's a miniaturization of that. If, and it's like a sticker, if you just put it on the chest, uh, it also does all of those things as well, right? So for those, uh, for pediatric patients, uh, 
you can put those stickers over there and it will be able to do that. So we are working on that. It will be launched in Jan, but thanks a lot. It was a very good observation. Uh, sir, <coughs> I am Dr. Alka Chandak, Director for Symbiosis Center of Healthcare. Yeah. It was a very like technology-based, uh, excellent uh, session. Uh, my question is, what is the cost of it yeah. as regards the volume game in India is concerned? Sure. And what is the backup system if something goes wrong uh, sure. with the machine? Uh, how you are going to support for repair and maintenance? Got it. Uh, again, very, very good question. I'm very happy with that. So cost, again, uh, as I mentioned, idea of this was to go in every bed. Right now, it nearly costs about 100. Uh, so we charge on a rental basis for this so that you know a lot of load is not there on the hospitals to start with itself. So we nearly charge about 5,000 rupees a month. So it's actually quite affordable. Mm -hmm. Our aim was one-tenth the cost of ICU equipment. And if the hospital actually buys it for long term, it gets even lower as well. Uh, right? And with scale, this can further come down as well. Hello? Okay. You can do either. Uh, mostly what we have seen hospitals do, rent it. It's a good model that way because they are always getting the upgrades and all of that, right? You're not taken one technology. So as I was mentioning, ma'am, if we are coming up with the next generation thing, you automatically get the upgrades, right? So it's a preferred model nowadays. You know, Ajkal, Meriya, Equagard be rented, right? So that's that's a preferred because maintenance per wo company ka kaam hai, and company also prefers that, uh, right? That way. So uh, we are uh, you know doing that, uh, and the home version is even cheaper. Home version can be bought. Home version is nearly about twenty thousand rupees, one unit bought. So yeah. Thank you. Simply uh, amazing uh, talk, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, opened our eyes and uh, for a long time. Sir, there's a big population of diabetes in our country and for that matter all over the world. Anything equivalent, something like that. A pregnant lady has to undergo six pricks a day to monitor yeah. her diabetes. And many of us in this hall are, are diabetic. Yeah. Imagine early morning, first thing to do is a prick your finger yeah. and see the readings. Yeah. No, I, I agree, sir. Lots of people have been asking me about that. Uh, and as you know, it is not a problem which everyone is working on, including Google, Apple, Samsung. I know researchers over there are also working on that. <laughs> yes. Correct. Yeah, so the, uh, that one sensor that works in the subcutaneous ish, uh, tissue, right? I think that is one which has come out. And you are right. The reason why it has not been adopted because there is a lot of variation. It will take some time. I think there are some also companies which are working on, you know, trying to analyze that on the basis of sweat, uh, you know, how the electrical conductance of the uh, skin is changing based on that. Even that is being worked on. Some things take time. I think we are, this is one of them. So yeah, we are Mr. working Dandwati, on. Mr. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Dandwati, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dandwati. Here, uh, oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. yeah, for the lovely presentation. It's really inspiring what you are doing, and uh, hats off to you. Um, I would like to ask you, uh, uh, because the topic is on a startup, uh, not on the product, yeah, I would yeah. just go to the, to the startup thing, yeah. that I'm sure the journey was not as easy as, as it made to be. So which were your lowest points, and how did you manage to overcome them? That is one. And number two is another uh, suggestion is if you can work on a model that will work in ambulances, yeah. and how you will deal with those vibrations sure compared to the patient's pickup? Correct. So I'll answer number two one because it's very simple, uh, right? Uh, simple as in smaller answer. So I don't think this technology can work everywhere, right? I don't think it is meant to work in ambulance. There, I think the patch system can work much better. So we are ourselves working on a patch. Only thing with patch is that it is only measuring two parameters, uh, heart rate and rhythm. Uh, right, maybe temperature. So we are working on a patch which actually one patch does all. Heart rate, respiration, blood pressure, temperature, rhythm, uh, and uh, which one I missed? All, whatever. <laughs> I missed also, right? So all of them can be done from one single thing, right? I think that is the way of doing that. Our dozy, the system, I don't think it will work on the ambulance part of it. Hi, Coming, sir. I think there was one more question. Let me answer, because that was a very critical question. and. Uh, so the challenges of it, right? I'll start. This is a longish answer. Uh, there were many. Because every year you have a challenge. Even today also, there are three challenges in the back of my mind which we are actually solving. 
uh, right now. So first step, of course, the challenge was, uh, you know, one of the challenge for a startup always, and especially in this domain, is money, right? Of course, you know, because at the end of it, it is about finance. You have to pay people, right? How do you do that? So ensuring that you have, you are well-funded all the time. So, so far, Dozi has raised close to about 200 crores in funding from India and outside and so on. But of course, you know, that's, that is now. But before this, it has gone through patches. So I have put in all my savings in this, whatever I had sa saved for my master's, and therefore, you know, I'm a B-Tech. <laughs> so, so basically, my master's, Gaurav's master's, right? All those funds have gone into Dozi. Uh, right, it started from that. Then, after we had a product, we got some grants from the government. Once we had that, then it is always step by step process. Then we were able to show it. We raised some money from our friends and family. Then, when we were able to show that, uh, we then raised money from our VCs. And after that, it is performance. So, when you raise from VCs, the point when your product is actually out in the market. If it is then performing well, then you can quickly, you know, scale up. That is one, right? So, it was finance part of it. The second part is this entire you know, process. I don't think in medical devices there is a set guideline, especially in India, because before us, not many people had actually done this entire journey. So we didn't have any playbook. So therefore, I would say, looking at Dozi's journey, probably what we did in seven years, someone can do it in five. Right? That two years, we kind of, you know, because of recursive nature of this entire thing, that took us more, but I think that was the learning that we had uh, all together. And the third part is the market itself, uh, right? which was very important. Just before COVID, we actually launched the product. We failed, big time. And Dr. Jada knows me from that, right? So he has seen my full circle. He has seen me from where I was, uh, you know, just a football to now, right? Where also I am now a football only. <laughs> Nothing has changed. But <laughs> what has changed maybe, right? So at that time, the entire concept of digital health was early, right? So at that time, if I was talking to hospitals that, you know, this is the issue, you're saying, nah, this is not the issue, right? What are you saying, right? This is not the issue. There is no shortage on nursing. It is all in your head, right? This is how it happens. It happens in 40 years, now it will happen. There is no problem. Came COVID, right? Same set of hospitals who were challenging us then said, ki, yaar, no, you had brought something, right? Because our staff is getting infected, right? Now we have staff, how are monitoring? Right? Now it will be that. So we bring that. So we got our first chance. So then you have to maximize your chance. In COVID, within two years, we had nothing. We had almost two months of runway left and so on. At that time, we scaled up everything. Hired people, gave them motivation talk, not salary, right? And they stuck. They actually stuck. They believed in the vision. And then, after that, we onboarded close to 180 hospitals within one and a half years of that time, all digital. Didn't even go there, all on calls and everything. Supply chain was broken, nothing could have been brought. We had to redo everything, a lot of things, you know, we had to reset from scratch everything, so did that. But then that got us the fame that, you know, no, something like this, when implemented, works. It saves life. It created that entire digital image over there, not just for us, by the way, for everyone now. Right? Ki digital technology in healthcare works. This was something which was proven in COVID by multiple companies also in that way. And then I would say it was our third and final and most important challenge, which was post-COVID. Right? When we did phenomenal work in COVID, right? Then after COVID, we were tagged a COVID product. Right? Now, every hospital was like, yeah, COVID ke time was fine. Right? Tab iska zarurat tha. Ab mujhe nahi lagta iska zarurat hai. Then, redoing that entire narrative, doing that study again for, uh, basically, cardiac, respiratory, pulmonary, kidney transplant, all those patients again and again, and showing them that, you know, you still need that. Right? This is the standard of care, which is which was not just COVID. And still, I would say, Right? Still, have we made it standard of care? No. So that challenge still remains. We are creating a market. It's a very challenging journey that way. So, and they are going to be there, but there are 100 reasons not to do it. Very hard. But there is only one reason. And that is that when it's right, then it's 
बस दैट इज माई इनफ मोटिवेशन ऑफ यू नो कीप ऑन डूइंग दिस फॉर एवर ड्यू टू शॉर्टेज ऑफ टाइम वी वोट बी एबल टू टेक एनी मोर क्वेश्चन Thank you sir for taking yeah. us through different AI based system in healthcare industry as well as how human touch is still irreplaceable. We definitely felt motivated after your session and would really love to be part of startups in healthcare industries. I would now request Dr. Rajiv Yeravdekar, Provost Faculty of Medical and Health Sciences Symbiosis International University to felicitate Mr. Mudit Danwate.